so after almost five hours in the saddle now, Tommy Prim from Sweden still faces five more laps of this nine and a half mile circuit and 123 and a half miles already in his legs. This is a most marvellous breakaway. He caught Bernard Valley, he's caught him, he's left him, and now he's been in the lead himself for 22 and a half miles. And this is Job Zutemela of Holland, the first real time we've seen the pedalling millionaire get out in front and try to win a world title, something he's never done. He's finished in the Tour de France, a record six times in second place. And attacks coming there too from Pierre Raymond Villemien of France. And here he comes, a former champion of France two years ago. And knowing now he has a free hand in this race because Bernard Eno has given up. In second place, Zutemelt of Holland. Look at the face of Contini in third place. And Tony Doyle fighting there in fourth place now, trying to match these boys. Pedal rep for pedaler. There he goes in fourth place. And Sean Kelly too in the top 15. Hugh, this race is really turning out to be a cracker. It's hotting up, bubbling up to a big climax here. We're really going to see some racing over these final four laps. Good to see Tony Doyle of Great Britain still there, up with the leaders. But Contini of Italy, he's well in contention and a hot favourite for this one. So as they come through, strutting the corner now here, the whole pack going through and the leader, Tommy Prim, has been caught and just a couple of riders possibly off the front of this group. Certainly heading this pack, we can see Denmark's Kim Anderson and that rider deserves something out of a professional life because he's such a consistent rider without landing the big win. Now I think for the first time since this race began 14 laps ago, we're seeing the tactics now of riders watching and waiting. The official figure here around the 9.5 mile circuit is 50,000 people have turned up in Goodwood to see this world title battle. And the attack coming now, Hugh Porter, from Joop Zutemelt of Holland. Joop Zutemelt, this is the one title that has eluded him five times second in the Tour de France. But it's Zutemelt, the man who is attacking at the moment. He's being chased by Contini in third position there of Italy. Contini another favourite for this, so the big guns are really coming to the front now. I wonder if you shall see Sean Kelly reacting to this as well. He went through that corner in about eighth position. The rest of the bunch flowing through there behind, and the pace really hotting up now as they head towards the 140-mile point. And there go the two boys in green, Sean Kelly and Stephen Roach of Ireland, and they are in the group too. So as we go out of Valdo Farm Gate now, Hugh Porter coming down to the crossroads of Woodcote, Zutemelk leading them through. A 36-year-old Dutchman, my goodness me, the power that that man has still got. And in second place, it's still Contini of Italy. He's been riding near the front the whole of this race, but on guard, another Dutchman coming through there. That's Gregor Braun of West Germany, a former Olympic pursuit champion and one of the strongest professionals on the pro circuit. So all the big men now starting to mass at the front of this Big, big bunch as they go through now on lap 14. Indeed, and this is Theo de Roy of Holland now going on to the attack here. And he's being followed by Ginetti of Italy. So the Dutch and the Italians here now working very, very hard indeed to try and outwit each other. As those two riders go clear, no reaction yet from the rider on the front from Holland. And that is Jan Kuiper of... No, it's not, it's Henk Luberding of Holland. 106 on the far right of the course. But we've got a lone break here coming out of the trees is Henny Kuiper. Henny Kuiper, the man that won this World Championships in the 70s in Belgium. He's a winner of the Tour of Switzerland. He's been in the top three in the Tour de France. And what a strong rider he is. He took the Olympic gold medal for winning the Road Race Championship at Munich for the Olympics. And this is exactly what he did when he took the championship in the 70s, when he sneaked away from the leading group with one lap to go, and he won. So the onus is on the others. And Phil Anderson has moved up there to third spot now on the wheel of Jupe Zuttermelk. There is Henny Kuiper, and he's been dropped by Lagiretta, so the Spaniard has the gap now, coming up towards the finish, one lap to go. The Spanish rider, and this will be the biggest surprise of any World Championships if Spain take this title. There's the bell, here comes, here comes uh, Kuiper, there's the main field. Sean Kelly has got to bridge this gap now, Hugh. Yes, very dangerous, but I think the fact that the Spaniard is running the lead is going to play into the hands of Kelly, because it means that the chasers have now got to fetch him back, because... They were hoping that Henny Kuiper was the man that was favourite and could win. Forcing his way over the top of this climb now with just over nine miles to go to the finish of this World Professional Road Race Championship. Two kilometres, just over a mile to the finish. 
Kelly surely will not allow this to go. La Giretta trying again. Jonathan Boya joining him. So La Giretta of Spain and Boya of the USA. Neither nation having won the world title before. La Giretta glances over his shoulder. And how on earth he's finding the strength now to go for home on this final lap when he was away for the previous lap, I really don't know. But Boya goes clear and Boya must not be left, left alone because he was fifth in the world title on a very, very difficult course in Solange a year, uh, two years ago. Sean Kelly realising the danger, he's surging to the front, so are the Dutchmen, but look at Jonathan Boyer, he's attacking after almost 169 miles, he realises at the end he's in sight, he would be the first American to ever win this world title, but the Dutch realise the danger, they're trying to close the gap, Sean Kelly very well placed there, he's on the wheel at the moment of Giuseppe Cerrone, the man who could possibly dislodge him in a sprint finish, so the big sprinter starting to mass at the front, but they've got to catch that Lazzaretti and Jonathan Bowyer of course he's the man who's going away he's taken the chance this is what can happen at the end well 65,000 people here are being treated to a most extraordinary finish of the world championship in Goodwood Bowyer changes gear he glances over his shoulder he knows he can still do it and Greg Lamont of the United States comes as well now really Lamont should not be doing this because he's bringing with him all the other riders towards his teammate and one of those riders is Sean Kelly Round the corner comes Jonathan Bowyer, and just behind him comes the whole field. Bowyer now heading up to the finish. It's agonising for this, and right past he goes to Demi Cerrone. Cerrone is going to take the world title. This is a tremendous finish for Italy, and look at the speed of him now. Cerrone washes by Bowyer as he comes up the line and tips right in with the crowd. Cerrone of Italy, and the Italians are going absolutely mad here on the line as they are about to hit the line now. Giuseppe Cerrone has won the world title. He throws kisses to the crowd. And in second place there goes Jonathan Bowyer. And I think Sean Kelly was third with a bronze medal. And so the proud moment in the life of Giuseppe Cerrone after three second places in the last four years for Italy. This time he's landed for his country the world professional crown. He shakes hands there with Greg Lamond in second place. And there he is. Giuseppe Cerrone, he's a pin-up boy in Italy, they call him Beppe, and he's finally come home with the goods. He was second last year in the World Championships in Prague. And now, the jersey of a world champion, and for one year hence, he can ride everywhere in the rainbow colours of the jersey of the 1982 champion of the world. And Sean Kelly looks on there. Sean, I think, will feel personally very disappointed because Sean is a winner by instinct. But really, this has been one of Ireland's finest rides. And Kelly, as such a young man, has a tremendous future ahead of him. The silver medal there to Greg Lamond, who's been tipped by Bernard Eno to be able to win the Tour de France two years from now. And the noise and the crowd of 65,000 people erupts as Kelly waves to them and it would not have been louder if he had been wearing that rainbow jersey.